Hey there, Foxy Gamers! Welcome to my min-max guide for Stardew Valley. The purpose of this playthrough was to get as high a net worth as I possibly could without any mods, glitches, or cheats. The final result was a whopping 213,000 gold with 117,000 in pocket by the morning of summer year one. I wanted to execute this playthrough in a manner achievable by the average experienced Stardew Valley player. I don't recommend this guide to new players who are unfamiliar with game mechanics or who want to experience their first playthrough in a relaxed manner. The beginning of the first spring is pretty intense and doesn't leave a lot of room for error. This guide is unedited, showing every single moment of each day so that you can see what sort of good or bad luck I had, how many fails I committed, and basic general suckage. I had a lot of goofs like accidentally using energy, walking back and forth between places because I forgot something, and other normal human errors. Instead of restarting my day every time this happened, I left all that in there to leave room for mishaps you might have as well. This will be a four-part guide where I take you through the entirety of Spring Year One. I'll have commentary at the beginning of each episode as well as any time there is something important to note that is happening on screen, with calming moments of the Stardew Valley soundtrack in between. After clearing a bit of land to plant your crops later, and getting enough wood for one chest, the goal of day one is to get as much gold from forageables as you can. This includes whacking every weed in sight for the chance of mixed seeds dropping. It's important to make your way around the entire map in the first day. I start by heading through the north exit of the farm and make my way around counterclockwise. Check trash cans whenever you run by them at the beginning of the game as they have a chance to drop food that can give you a great boost. Don't worry about villagers getting mad at you. We don't care about being their friend yet anyway. It's important to have your scythe with you for harvesting weeds as well as your hoe to try and get an artifact. If you do find an artifact before 4pm, go turn it into Gunther for the 250 gold initial reward. You can use this to buy additional parsnip seeds from Pierre before his store closes. One thing I should have done on the first day is saved one of each forageable to turn into a 10 pack of seeds to then sell later. That will net you 70 gold more than selling them individually. It doesn't sound like much, but money has a crazy snowballing effect this early in the game. Once you're done scouring the map, head back to your farm to plant and water your seeds. If you don't get everything done in the first night, that's okay, but get as many parsnips planted as possible while also leaving some time to clear a path to the southern exit of your farm. Don't be afraid to eat whatever forageables you found for energy, just make sure you're efficient with usage. At the end of the day, do not put anything in your shipping bin. I'll explain why later. When you wake up on day two, finish planting and watering your remaining parsnips and mixed seeds. Before you leave your farm, check your mail. You have to have read the letter from Willie before he'll give you a fishing pole, which is critical for the rest of the day. When you're ready to leave, dump all but 60 fiber and any clay you have in the shipping bin. Also dump any geodes and remaining forageables you might have, as long as you have at least 30 energy remaining. Drop off all your tools and remaining items before making your way towards the beach. Remember to check trash bins along the way again. Once you get your fishing pole, instead of fishing at the ocean, immediately head for the mountain lake and stand in the spot you see me go to here. There are a few reasons for this. For one, it's useful that your cast will not land anywhere near another shore, making sure you are always catching the highest possible quality. Secondly, the fish here are pretty easy to catch, but also sell for a decent amount compared to the ocean fish. It's incredibly important to try and get as many perfect catches as possible, as it gives you two and a half times XP as a regular catch. You should be able to do this at least with the carps. For example, a perfect carp catch will grant you 20 XP, which is better than any possible imperfect catch here at this level. Eat algae, joji colas, and fish to keep your energy levels up for the rest of the day. When faced with a choice of fish to eat, always go for the highest quality chub first. It wasn't until later on in this run that I realized chubs are the best energy value per gold that you'd otherwise get from selling it. So, even carps are better to sell than chubs. Whenever a chest pops up during your fishing, always prioritize getting the chest over a perfect catch so long as it doesn't cause you to fail. 
The chest drops are so good that it is worth sacrificing some perfect catches or slightly better fish. Continue fishing all the way until you pass out at 2 a.m. It won't hurt you as you don't have any gold to lose and you'll wake up at full energy since you should have gotten at least one level in fishing. Supposedly it's possible to get all the way to level 3, but I've never managed to make it past 2. When you go to bed, you'll notice that you made some money from the stuff you checked in your bin earlier, but since you didn't make a profit until after the day ended, you won't lose any gold to passing out. It's always raining on day three of spring year one, so you won't have to water your crops today. I took a minute to plant some rice shoots that I fished up earlier, but if you didn't get any, don't worry. It's not really necessary for this run, I just wanted to save rice for later in the game. Don't drop your fish into the shipping bin. Save them to sell until tomorrow. Before leaving the farm, I make sure to chop enough wood to take a chest to my fishing spot later. I find the time and energy chopping trees to be worth not having to throw away any valuable items while fishing. Bring your fishing pole, chest, and all of the fish you got yesterday with you and head to the ocean. If Willie's isn't open yet, fish until he is. Your goal here is to have enough money for a fiberglass rod and a good chunk of bait. I didn't have enough initially, so I hung out at the ocean and continued to fish until I had enough to sell him. Once you're stocked up, head to the forest lake. I checked for spring onions when I got there, but later I found this is not really necessary. Go to the spot you see me here for the same reasons as our spot yesterday. So why the forest lake today instead of the mountain lake? In general, I prefer the mountain lake. However, when I want to fish while it's raining, I go to the forest lake with the hope that I can catch some catfish. These are really hard to catch below level 3 fishing in my opinion, and I think I only caught about 3 today. Again, it's one of those things that aren't absolutely necessary for the run, but every little bit helps.
I got incredibly lucky by fishing up a trident weapon from a chest. I actually tried replaying the day a couple times because I felt it was maybe a little unfair for this guide, but honestly, every time I tried, I'd get something else that seemed super lucky too. So hopefully you'll also find yourself bestowed with good fortune by finding some things that will sell for a pretty penny. You'll notice throughout this run that I dump all my geodes in the shipping bin instead of saving them to crack open at Clint's. This is because I find the 25 gold per geode cost is not worth the rare chance that I'll find something helpful for this run. It's usually a lot of artifacts which isn't a concern of mine this early on. I ran back to the farm at the end of the night, but you can actually fish until you pass out again as long as you don't have any gold. You might be wondering what's going to happen to all those fish I left in that chest. Well, as it turns out, I'm a derp that actually forgot about them for the rest of the season and didn't realize I left them there until making this recording. It was about 1500 gold worth of fish just sitting there, so as long as you don't also make this big of a mistake, you really shouldn't have a problem achieving what I did. The beginning of day 4 starts with routine watering of your crops. Harvest 50 wood again, and head straight for the mountain lake with only your fishing rod, some food, and a chest. Plop it down near your spot. Fish away for the rest of the day. Don't forget to prioritize treasure chests, then perfect catches, and eat chubs before any other fish unlike you might see me do. Since you probably have some money now, you'll want to head back to your farm in time to go to sleep. 12.30am should give you enough time without stressing too much. If I find I get back earlier than I intended, I'll usually use up the remaining time or energy by clearing things off my farm. You should have easily gotten to level 5 fishing today, so you can choose the Fisher perk. On day 5, harvest whatever parsnips are ready and water the rest of your plants. I'd recommend hanging on to all your parsnips for now to potentially use them for food. You'll need a lot, and they're a very good energy to cost ratio. 
drop off all your fish into the bin except for some chubs for munching, then gather 50 wood for another chest. Bring your pickaxe, food, chest, and any weapon you may have found through fishing. Today is our first day in the mines. Head over there, plop your chest near the elevator, and get going. You want to get as deep as you can, but our primary goal today is to get 45 copper ore. This gives you enough to make one furnace and smelt five copper bars tomorrow so we can upgrade our pickaxe. Here are my tips for the mines. Scour the entire floor of a level before mining any rocks to see if a staircase is already spawned. Mine any nearby gems or veins on your way. If the level is small and there aren't many enemies, kill them all. This will give you a 4% increased chance to find a staircase. Otherwise, you should try avoiding enemies whenever possible. I find that it actually takes more time killing them all than to just start whacking rocks on the bigger levels. I realized later, however, it's good to try and kill at least 10 green slimes before you get to level 40 in order to complete the quest that lets you into the guild. As it's the only place you can sell weapons and armor, I find it useful to make a trip over there now and then. Each time you reach an elevator, you can go dump your stuff in the chest. Do not drop coal if your inventory is full. We're going to be needing tons of it later on. I like to collect a bit of bug meat to turn into bait so I don't have to waste time or money getting it from Willy later. I don't turn in any of the gems to the museum or gift them. They all go straight to my shipping bin. Once 12.30 a.m. hits, take the most valuable items you found with you along with all the stone and copper. Head back home and drop off gems and geodes in your bin. Day 6 is the big one. Clear out a huge section of land and start tilling in preparation for new seeds. Make a furnace and smelt five copper bars in the process. Sometime in the early afternoon, take a break and go ahead to Clint's with your pickaxe and five copper bars. Get the copper pickaxe upgrade. Now you're about to make Pierre cry with joy over how much money you're going to spend at his shop today. There are two options you have here, kale or potatoes. Kale will grant you more XP and gold per harvest, allowing you to plant fewer crops, but potatoes will give you more XP per gold spent on seeds. So, figure out which is the best option for you. What we're trying to do here is get to level 6 farming on day 12. However, if absolutely necessary, you can push it to day 14. We still need to plant as many crops as we can on day 6 in order to have money for strawberry seeds. Okay, math time. The necessary total amount of XP needed to get to level 6 farming is 3300. Each parsnip gives you 8 XP. So in my case, I can figure out that I'm at 560 out of 3300 farming based on the 70 parsnips I've harvested. 
The 7 rice I planted will give me 49 XP for a total of 609. That leaves us with 2,691 XP to go. Kale is 17 XP per harvest and potatoes are 14. I could spend 11,060 gold on 160 kale seeds or 9,550 gold on 193 potato seeds. I opted for potatoes since I didn't want to have to sell too many of my parsnips, but if you're rolling in the dough, kale is your best option. Once you're done, it's time to head home and start planting. If you have enough time left, finish out the night fishing at the mountain lake. You can fish until 2 a.m. since you're probably broke again. Day 7 is when the watering grind starts. Get all your plants taken care of and head back to the mountain lake. If you happen to get a level in fishing today, you can fish until 2 a.m. again since we didn't make any money overnight. If you didn't get a skill up though, make sure to get back home in time. Our food will be precious for a while, so you don't want to start the next day at low energy. 
That's going to be it for this portion of the guide. Stay tuned for part two. If you enjoyed this guide, but you'd like to see a short and sweet version as well, let me know in the comments below, and if there's enough demand, I'll be sure to make one. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel for future guides. If you're interested in seeing my Stardew Valley Let's Play series, check out the playlist below. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, stay foxy.